On this last episode of the Backyard Pitmaster podcast, we talk about the Christmas holiday, steaming some oysters, and guess who has a new smoker? Get ready for an action-packed episode, so let's get it going. This is a Maverick Podcast Network production. I don't want to I don't want to say What up, what up, everybody? This is Charlie Maverick, and welcome back to the Backyard Pitmaster Podcast, brought to you by the Maverick Podcast Network. I hope everybody had a great Christmas holiday, or whatever religious-affiliated holiday that you celebrate around the December winter solstice time frame. I am blessed and highly favored to be with you today. I got a lot of stuff to talk about, man. Before, But before we get to all that, make sure you follow me on social media, at Charlie Maverick on Twitter and all the social channels. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube to the Backyard Pitmaster Podcast and all the other podcasts at the Maverick Podcast Network. You can find me on Facebook at the Maverick Podcast Network. Follow that page. Always posting content from this podcast and the other podcasts. One piece of content a week guaranteed for your listening pleasure. Man. What a year we had. Let's talk about the year first, because uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things that happened this year, a lot of great things that happened, and I'm excited. I'm really excited about the future. So the birth of the Backyard Pitmaster podcast started this year as an idea to spin off some new ideas isolated to a themed podcast instead of having everything in the Mavcast, you know, just giving people diverse ways to listen to specific topics, focused, focused shows. And I think that paid off, paid dividends. I had some great interaction with other content creators, which I want to take a second to thank those that have been involved with this podcast and other podcasts on the network. So first and foremost, I want to thank my wife. Um, she has been a real big supporter of me getting back into the podcast game. I took hiatuses here and there as I did with social media, but in 2020 I had to come back and go full force back into the podcast game. And in 2021, this year started this specific podcast. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you, it really made some ma- amazing things happen. Amazing things happen. So, uh, first and foremost, got to thank her. Uh, got to thank my mom, Mama Maverick. She's the co-host of, well, she's actually the main host. I'm just the producer and co-host of Jesus Take the Wheel. We started off with Cooking Grits, but we changed course about mid-year, you know, thinking like, hey, you know what? Let's uh, let's change it up while we can. Let's get it a little bit more uh, wide open to the topics that we can talk about and has been really well received and she listens to the show this podcast in particular and got some ideas uh, for cooking on the grill because she cooks on the grill too so thanks mom want to thank Terrence P. Elmore which is the, the person that has been on the podcast network the most times of anyone in the universe aside from myself He's co-hosted this podcast. He co-hosted the uh, the Mavcast, and always is ready, willing, and able to jump in and you know just just go along with my shenanigans. <laughs> so big supporter, big 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 contributor to the success of this podcast and the other podcasts on the network side. So just wanted to to thank him. Let's thank the guests that have came on to the Backyard Pitmaster podcast. First of all, Ben Bullman. Uh, He does the Angry Dads podcast and some others out there, so make sure you check him out. He's been on a couple of the episodes this year. We have really good conversation. He's from the West Coast, so we get that West Coast perspective of how the Backyard Pitmaster scene is over there. He loves tri-tip. You know, (laughs) the F-bombs are 
fast and furious, but hilarious. At the same time, we had some great conversation. And, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta really give a hand clap, a real big hand clap to Jeffrey Boyd, Outdoors with Jeff Creator. You know, he has this great brand that he's building up right now. He has merch out there. He has great content that I've watched and learned from. We've collaborated on a few podcasts. You can listen to those, and we have really, really good conversation and some really great things to come. So stay tuned in 2022 because there's going to be some big things that happen. We're talking behind the scenes to, to get some ideas flushed out, and I'm, I'm really excited uh, for the things to come working with Jeffrey Boyd. So make sure he, you check out Outdoors with Jeff on YouTube. I'll leave a link to all the content channels where you can find these guys. So big hand clap to all those guys. And I, I just want to say this show wouldn't have been such a success without you and the fans. Thank you to the fans that have consistently listened and watched the live streams when I used to do live streams. Um, you guys stuck in there. I know that we weren't on camera. I know it was a, a little bit awkward trying to listen and still use your phone but you guys did your due diligence and you stayed true and loyal. And I want to thank you for uh, the fans that keep coming back, listening, giving feedback and, and all that kind of great stuff so I can keep tweaking and tweaking and make things better. I want to thank the content provider of StreamYard for facilitating these type of recordings. You know, um, I've been wondering and looking and, and all this stuff for a great way to deliver quality sound content to you guys and there's no other place than StreamYard. It facilitates every type of um, content medium that I need to get all this stuff out to you guys and hope that you do like the sound quality. Because one thing about me, I, I really I really am a stickler for sound quality. Now, as you can tell over the years, uh, the evolution of the sound quality has grown exponentially and that has come from great feedback from you know the people that i've mentioned before you guys and I'm just trying to give you guys a great product um what what's in store for 2022 we're going to do some more like really topic driven podcast when i don't have guests on so i'm going to try to condense them a little bit trying to make them shorter because you know people don't have long attention spans <laughs> during that culture we've been trained by you know it's i think it started off with spongebob you know i, I want to say that you know or it's or maybe like shows that did like short skits or whatever but we have really really short attention spans tiktok tiktok is, is killing it with the short attention span thing oh, it's, it's like a drug but trying to do more topic driven condensed podcast when there's no guest on so you guys can you know get the point of what I'm trying to talk about without me rambling so much. But for this episode, I am going to ramble. So sit back, sit back, and relax. Get your nice drink. I got a shot of tequila over here. I usually have a shot of tequila or, you know, my favorite bourbon while I do this podcast. Because when you think about it, a, a part of being a pit master, for those that do drink, that is, a part of being a podcast is just sitting back watching that grill, start up, light up, get that dirty smoke out, get the clean smoke in, and throw back a couple, you know what I mean? When I first started to really get on the grill, the rite of passage was sitting outside with my dad some years ago, putting some meat on the grill, probably ribs, spare ribs to be exact, and we throw back a few and just talk about life. That's therapeutic. That's the way that I really developed the love for this particular type of cooking outdoors is the fact that you can, it's, it's like a Zen thing. And once you feel you are in a, a Zen mode, you will produce the best type of barbecue that you will ever produce and put in front of your family and friends. As long as you are not stressed, a stressed cook will have a subpar product. Just always remember that. So I got my tequila over here. I hope you're listening. You're sipping on your favorite beverage. You know, it's close to uh, 
New Year's Eve. So we about to drink up anyway, right? I'm warming up, basically. I'll warm it up. <laughs> it's the afternoon. Don't worry. I'm, I'm not one of those that just wake up and like, ooh, got to have that. No. Nah. But we're talking about grilling, smoking, and all that stuff. So, hey, it's a, it's a part of the, the process. It comes with the territory. But 2022 is going to be great, though. You know, I'm really excited. More videos, more video content on the YouTube channel is going to be coming out of my cooks. I've been kind of really lazy about getting the last few videos up regarding the stuff that I made recently, but I'll do better. I promise I'll do better. It's not a New Year's resolution. I'm not going to say that, but I'll do better. I'll try. I'll try. No promises, but I'll try. But the plan that we have in place for the content coming, I think, will drive more videos to the channel, and I hope you enjoy them. I hope you this is this is what I do also. I sit back, look at YouTube videos of, of grilling and smoking and all that. <laughs> Every time my wife comes downstairs, she's like, all right, he's watching another one. Really? You got to watch this while you grill? Like, yeah. You, you remember back in the day, uh, maybe people still do this, but when Food Network really got really, really popular with Emeril, Johnny, um, Bobby Flay, I don't know why they call him Johnny, um, but we used to watch... Food Network before, during, and after we cook, while we eat, after we eat, and we're like, ooh, I'm still hungry. It's, it's kind of that type of obsession. I would just have it locked on and just auto plays on YouTube. And, you know, that's how I found the Jeffrey Boyd. So I hope you guys enjoy what is to come with the Backyard Pitmaster podcast and the other podcasts on the network. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited. So, let's talk about Christmas holiday. I hope everyone had a great holiday. You know, a lot of the times it's really stressful for people, lonely for people. We're still in the pandemic, right? You know, we can't we can't be around a lot of people, or we shouldn't, as they say. You know, this arguable, whatever, whatever your stance is, however you celebrate your Christmas. I want to tell you about mine. So as usual, I go back to Charleston, South Carolina, my birthplace, and celebrate with both sides of the family. My family, my wife's family. We get together and we have a great fellowship together. Right? So this was like no other. Um, or I, I should say it's like usual. <laughs> I should say that. We went to Charleston. And let, me, let me just say. Driving from Atlanta to Charleston shouldn't be a big headache, but damn, is it a big headache. It's like I don't even want to get in the car. Like, I dread driving because I-20 and I-26, for that matter. God. Biden and the infrastructure plan make those roads better. <laughs> you got to make them better. These interstates are terrible. I fear for my life every time I get on the road. Oh, my God. It's terrible. All right. So as soon as we get on the road, there's a slowdown, of course. Going and coming back. I just want to say that. Going and coming back. There's always a wreck on I-26. And those of you that traveled on I-26, especially in South Carolina, you know there's always going to be a wreck. Slowdown or something. You're never going to make it on time unless you make up for your travel time when you drive. But, yeah, really stressful. So, first of all, you got to get out of Atlanta. That's a feat by itself, right? You got to go down 400. Those of you that have been in Atlanta, you know how it is. Get on 285, then uh, whatever shenanigans happen over there, you make it through. God bless you. Then you get on I-20, and then you're like, hmm, man, this is a struggle. <laughs> Like two hours later, I was still on this goddamn road. So we do a halfway point, right? I think it's exit five on I-20. Uh, I think it's LJ or Edgewood or something. I think it's Edgewood, South Carolina. Like right after you pass the um, the border when you get to South Carolina. Right out of Augusta, get to South Carolina. Take that. I think it's like one of the first exits right after the rest area. So... Everything's cool, right? I usually go there, stop, use the restroom, gas up, because, you know, you never know when you're going to get stuck 
on the interstate. So I always make sure I top off halfway. I don't need to, but I just don't want that bit of stress, right? So try to get back on the road, and there is an overturned tanker that is blocking the on-ramp back on I-20. Oh, that's great. So try to find another way. Uh, yeah, the cops didn't help try to, you know, divert traffic or tell us where to go. So you just had to figure it out, which was annoying as shit, right? So I'm over here. My wife's trying to help me out navigate, you know, and we go in a circle. Google Maps ain't helping either for that matter. So go in a circle. And I'm like, I'm already irritated. So we try to find the way out. So we go down the road, like maybe five miles down the road. <laughs> yeah, this is turning out great. And then get on a a freeway that is supposed to get us back to I-20. But, you know, I'm looking at Google Maps. And, you know, if you pay attention to that, that blue path too much and not, you know, go with the actual distance. Yeah, I made the wrong turn and I had to loop all the way back around again. Yeah, I said I was like 30 minutes lost. That was great. But eventually we got to Charleston, right? Great spending time with family. We stayed there for about, I think, two, two, two and a half days. And gone, gone over to uh, April's parents' house first. And as we do normally on Christmas Eve, there is some type of seafood. Now, we weren't expecting to have any seafood because the price of everything has gone up so much. And we were like, eh, whatever, you know. We'll just, we'll just have the hors d'oeuvres or whatever. We'll just chill while people open their presents, the kids play blah, blah, and all that. So we were surprised. We were surprised, surprised, surprised. So my father-in-law had some oysters. And if you know me, or if you know anyone from South Carolina, especially from Charleston, we are a seafood-eating people, and we love oysters. Now, there are two kinds of oysters. There's the clusters and the selects. So basically, you got a big-ass rock, that has multiple in the clusters, multiple multiple oysters in the cluster, or the selects have the one big ass oyster, and yeah, the selects usually cost more, but you always get a good amount of oyster. The selects hit or miss. It might be not much in it, but they tend to give off a little bit more flavor. Maybe I don't know. So we were surprised that we had oysters. And if you don't know how to get the seasonal oysters, just think of every month that has an R in it. And you'll get the best, freshest oysters from the seafood market and probably at a lower price because it is in season versus any other time of the year. So the thought was, all right, let's just kill these oysters. Boom, boom, boom. We were hanging out a little bit, you know, my brother-in-law, um, uh, my, my, my father-in-law's nephew. We were hanging out outside, telling stories, talking about life and all that, throwing back some oysters, mainly me throwing back oysters. And <laughs> you know, that's how I do, put a little hot sauce on it. And it was all good. But there was a half a bushel left. And half a bushel, if you don't know, it, they, they put a, a, a whole bunch of oysters in a croaker sack. You don't know what a croaker sack is. Utilize Google right now, please. I, I don't know how how extensive I can go down this rabbit hole of explaining, but you get you get this. You basically, you buy it by the bushel. This is like just think of like a apples, like a bushel of apples type thing, right? Same kind of um, quantity ratio way, right? All right, cool. And there was a half a bushel left, so we we're going over to my parents' house for Christmas and trying to figure out what we're going to do with these oysters. So it's been a long time since I cooked oysters before. It's been a long time. I didn't have to, right? Didn't have to. So it's usually somebody else doing it. I'm just killing it, killing it, killing it, killing the oysters. But this is the first time I actually had to do it in a long time, so I, I needed help. So I solicited the help of my father-in-law because he was making it over at his house on Christmas Eve. Man, these oysters were good, by the way. Did I say that before? These oysters were slamming good. Yes. Um, the salty and everything. So when we went over to my parents' house, we're trying to figure out, hey, we got this half bushel of oysters. What are we going to do with it? 
So to put it in perspective, we had immediate family over, niece, nephew, brother, uh, his wife, uh, mom, dad, April, you know, the, the crew, the crew, you know? And I was thinking, you know, should I do oysters Rockefeller? That's a lot of work. You gotta shuck the oysters. <laughs> you gotta you gotta make the the mix, like the seasoning mix with the Parmesan cheese and all that. You gotta bake them or grill them or however. That's a lot of work, right? You know, at the end of a big Christmas dinner uh, and all the stuff that we were doing, like having fun, I was sipping on some Crown. Man, I didn't feel like doing all that. So. Oh, we were playing cornhole too, by the way. Fun game. So I was like, all right, we got to eat these oysters before they go bad, right? Because we leave the next morning, and if I don't cook them, they're not going to be eaten because my mom don't eat seafood anymore. And most of the family don't even eat oysters like that, which boggles my mind. But my niece wanted to try out oysters for the first time. This reminds me. Uh, when my when my late sister, <laughs> her experience with oysters, <laughs> I can't remember how it turned out, but the look on the face was about spot on accurate between her and my niece. So the way that we ended up trying to cook these oysters uh, were on my mom's gas grill, three burner gas grill. And here's the way that I suggest making oysters on your grill when you're not doing it in the oysters Rockefeller manner. So it's just easily light steamed, you know what I mean? So if you got a gas grill, this is probably gonna be the easiest thing to do, unless you wanna make it inside the oven, but you're gonna smell up the house. So this is for, you know, that opportunity to not smell up your house. After you've got all those nice scents of turkey, ham, and, and greens, and all that stuff inside, you don't wanna, you don't wanna mess it up with a, with a, with a you know, a shellfish smell. Like twist your stomach a little bit because you've been drinking too, right? All right. So you put the oysters in a in a pan. You could do this in any pan. Just make it sure it fits on whatever cooking apparatus that you're trying to use, right? So it was the turkey roaster, the bottom half of the turkey roaster. Got them in there. Put in a shallow bit of water, just enough to cover the bottom half of the oysters, and put about I don't know the ratio of salt, but I try to just, you know, sprinkle it for 10 seconds. And how many ever batches you got to make, just make sure you you line the bottom of that pan with how many ever oysters that will fit into that pan without, like, stacking on top of each other, right? So salt, sea salt, um, kosher salt, table salt, however you may do it, just try to feel out how salty you want these. Now, because they are seafood and they're steamed, they could take a pretty good amount of salt. I would say like a fourth cup is, is a good baseline to go with without overdoing it. So you go with that and you put it over low heat. And the reason why you want to do it over low heat is you don't want it to cook too fast to where it gets overdone, right? So light up this three burner gas grill and put it in this the bottom half of the turkey roaster with salt and all that stuff made into two batches that will take care of half a bushel right there and just let it go for about 10 minutes and 10 minutes will get you at a, at a pretty good pretty good medium steam on these guys so it's not dry but it's not super super slimy right so it's cooked enough of that bacteria off you know <laughs> enough of that bacteria where you like i don't know if i should be eating raw seafood right Especially if it's been like sitting, you know, chilled, mind you, but sitting for, you know, a day or so. You, you want to cook it a little bit. So after 10 minutes, dumped it out, killed it, killed it, killed it, killed it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. So if you're still listening to this when there's a month with an R in it, go out and get you some oysters. Now, if you live in Atlanta like I do, oysters aren't created equal. I want to say that I, I really got to put that disclaimer out there. Nothing's better than coastal wild caught oysters. Now, will you find in Atlanta, 
if they don't try to price you out of it, is you'll probably find some farm-raised oysters. It's, it's kind of like any other thing that's farm-raised versus wild-caught. It ain't the same. It doesn't have that yeah to it, you know, that yeah. <laughs> that thing, that thing that makes you say, ooh, I'm glad I drove five hours for this. <laughs> it was worth it just for that, right? But around here in Atlanta, I think the only really good product that you get out of oysters, and you probably only find the selects, like the single ones, is it's good for oysters Rockefeller. That's that's pretty much. Now you can find you can find places where they get them sourced from the coast, but they're gonna price you up because they ha they have to come all the way inland. And if you are in the Midwest, God help you. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's not going to be the same. You know, it's it's kind of like going to uh, a non coastal town and expecting to get that dynamic flavor of fresh seafood like going to a coastal town you can find ways to use this and cook with it but it ain't going to be the same as if you just lightly steam them like we did with these charleston oysters so try that out man try it out try oysters out put some tabasco hot sauce i don't know whatever you want to drink it with a corona beer with a lime in it or a modello uh you, it, you got to just try this thing, man. Or, hey, I tell you what, you can even uh, steam this thing in some beer. And, and whatever your flavor is, whatever your flavor palette wants, go and put it in there. Go, in, go ahead and try it. I guarantee you, you will love it. And if you don't, oh well. But at least tried it. She actually ate about a, a few of them. I was surprised. And that is a testament to actually cooking it the right way because most of the time people won't like oysters if you undercook it or overcook it right you don't overcook it like a muscle like you know how muscles are they're already kind of like a little dry anyway right so you don't want to cook it like that but you want to cook it in that medium range i love that medium range the saltiness of the water that comes out from the water that was already in, plus the little salt that you put in there, permeates through. It's awesome. So that was that was a great experience. We came back, you know, we're back home now, waiting for the new year to come in, and I'm still thinking about these oysters. I am. I'm, I'm not lying to you. I'm thinking about these oysters. We want oysters as much as we want snow crab legs. Mind you, that has also gone up. And, and everything in price has gone up. It, it kind of prices you out of that impulse buy, like, hey, let's go get some, right? You know? But oysters are that thing. <laughs> There's a couple of funny stories that I, I ate so much oysters in the past <laughs> that I got sick because I just ate too much. There's a restaurant called Gilligan's in Charleston, South Carolina, and surrounding areas that have all you can eat oysters. And because oysters are the most expensive seafood that they would offer in that realm of shellfish, they give you shrimp with that as well, fried or steam. Yep. And I'm telling you, if you're not comfortable with cooking the oysters yourself, sourcing them, cooking them, I think it's like 25 or $30 a person. And you can eat all the oysters until you get sick, just like I did. I do not. It's worth it. I don't know. Like, as long as you don't vomit it all up, <laughs> it's worth it. If you get a little tummy ache, you're all right. You're all right. But, hey, you, you, it's worth it. I went back to eating oysters right after that. Uh, I lost all the weight. No, I, I, I repacked it. You know, uh, I, am a, I am a glutton uh, for stuff like that, and I'm not ashamed of it. So you ain't got to judge me. You take your judgment somewhere else. All right, just take your judgment somewhere else. So Christmas, oh man, Christmas is great. I love Christmas, my favorite holiday of the year. It really is about family, fun, fellowship. That's enough Fs, right? Yeah. And guess what? Got a new smoker. Oh, let me tell you about this smoker, man. All right, so for a while, 
I've been rocking the Weber Kettle Grills. As you know, I talk about it all the time. It's in the icon of the show art. I have three. Well, I had three. And it was two full-size 22-inch kettles and the Smoky Joe 14-inch. I was rocking those. And I'm, I thought to myself, like, I was filling these barbecue orders here and there for a while in 2021. And I hope to expand this in 2022, but I need more cooking area. But I don't want a, I don't want a redundancy in what I already have just to get more cooking space, right? So I went through and I looked at a whole bunch of grills and smokers. And I went back and forth for months, months and months and months and months and months. And, months. and I looked at the Master Build Gravity Series and the Char Griller. Uh, gravity series series of smokers slash grills and i'm like yeah i can get that but it's going to repeat the device that i already have but just more cooking area right i want a dedicated smoker and nothing but a dedicated smoker but i didn't want to pay too much to where i gotta try to put that you know make that money back up by selling these dinners I want something that I can, I can have consistency with. I can uh, still ch cook with charcoal. And I went back and forth with pellets. I was like, can I? Should I get a pellet grill? I don't know. I'm I'm like a, I'm like one of those traditionalists that you know. At the end of the day, I really got to cook with charcoal. And if I want wood flavor, I want to put wood on there. You know, if I put a little pellet tube, eh, that's fine. But I want the primary heat source to be charcoal because nothing beats that charcoal flavor that you get, right? So I went around and around and around and around and around, around in a circle, and I came across none other than the Master Build 40-inch digital charcoal smoker. And it has the same technology that the Gravity series of grills have. Let me explain what that means. So it gives you the best of both worlds. You have the functionality and the technology of a pellet grill with the controlled heat source and fans and all that to regulate the temperature for you. But you can also use charcoal, which is a big thing for me, big thing. And the price was right. It's around $400. You can find it on sale for about $350 maybe right so i'm like ah, i wonder if this is the one for me it has a huge amount of cooking space a huge amount of cooking space it goes from 220 degrees fahrenheit all the way to 400 so absolutely a dedicated smoker the heat the heat source comes from the bottom so you load the charcoal into this this uh this 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 pan or whatever you want to call it and it holds about 16 pounds of charcoal uh about i say 12 pounds of lump charcoal so 12 pounds of charcoal paquettes or 16 pounds of charcoal paquettes and 12 pounds of lump charcoal it depends on how huge the lump charcoal pieces are though so you know that may vary here and there but you get a consistent uh capacity if you use paquettes because they're, they're more or less formed to be the same size all around every bag that you get you know what i mean no matter what brand same size right <laughs> and i can put like maybe i forget how how much pork butts i can put on this thing like uh i feel like i can put 10 if i really try you know i can put like maybe four or five turkeys on here if i need to ribs holy crap uh I don't know. I feel like I could put at least 15 to 16 ribs on here if I need to. So you see where I'm going with this. I needed the capacity and the consistency of this technology, right? So I thought to myself, let's do it. So first, first, I, I did my due diligence and searched, searched online. I didn't want things to be shipped to me because I've read reviews where they had the order shipped to their house and it's all banged up. I don't want to deal with that. So I'm also one of those people 
that I need instant gratification. If I give you money, like for a certain amount of money today, I need to have that the same day, right? So I went on this website. I think it was Cabela's that I went on. And, oh, it was Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's, same company, different website, right? So I went there and they, they had this deal. It was like $100 off. I was like, ooh, that's great. And they said it was at a location which is about 30 minutes away. So I'm like, let me do it. Pull the trick. Boom, boom, boom. Went. I got the order. <laughs> and, and the email came with the order and said, it'll be to you within like 10 days. I'm like, what? Uh, that's that's not the premise. Why, that, I, what? No. I, if I knew that, I would have just not ordered it from you now thinking about it i was gonna be out of town for a few days so i didn't want <laughs> you know how people are doing the holiday if somebody sees a big ass package on your porch even if you have a doorbell camera whatever they can just put something on their face people wear a mask all the time right so they can they're probably gonna steal the shit so i'm like nah i need it today need it today so my wife was like go ahead and get it I get it. So I backed out of that order after I fussed with customer support for a while. I'm like, hey, y'all need to get this right, man. Like, why would you say that I can get it today when I obviously can't get it today? That's messed up. I need y'all to fix that. They're like, well, we're sorry. We're sorry. Nah, nah, I need you to fix the website. So I went through that so nobody else would have to go through this mess. But anyway, that's not here or there or whatever. So. I, w I looked on um, Home Depot. They had it. However, the place was like an hour away. And, you know, whatever. I work at home. I'm at home most of the time, so I'm like, eh, what's an hour? <laughs> what's an hour? Man, yeah, what's an hour, right? I forgot about Atlanta traffic. Like, I could ever forget about Atlanta traffic. So, went and I drove to get this thing. Um, the experience was good mind you but it's just a long way like i was like damn this is far away <laughs> this is really far away i went to an area where i've only passed through once in my life and i'm like good thing i got a gps because uh, i don't know if i can make it back home so i was trying to make it back home before dark because you know i don't like driving at night whatever so i got it back home sat there and i was like i gotta put it together tonight put it together that same day I was lucky to, or smart, to look at some YouTube videos about the assembly, and I saw a couple of red flags that were waved. Like, hey, 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 you probably want to look at these videos versus looking at the instructions in the book because they tell you to do some things out of order, and the instructions ain't really good at all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for Anderson Smoke Show YouTube channel. For having a really really detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on putting this thing together it went smooth as eggs yes smooth as eggs you ever heard that before i don't like saying smooth as big but like who is going around you know what i mean that's weird that's weird that's weird y'all gotta stop referencing that shit you know smooth as eggs though i'm talking about man two hours maybe two and a half hours because you know i had to take a little rest here and there and i was you know start and stop in the video so i can make sure i put the things together the right way it went pretty smooth the only thing that i found when i was doing the burn in because you definitely have to burn in this thing now this more than any other grill that i've ever seen had a lot of styrofoam and plastic on it like tape and blah 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 so you definitely cannot get away with not burning this in and getting rid of those chemicals and all that stuff that's in the packaging. You got to do that. You don't want to, you don't want to like stray out the box, a similar thing and put food on it right there. You got to get all of those chemicals out. Now, this thing has like five shelves, which I love. A lot, a lot, of, lot of space, a lot of space. Nice water pan, nice heat deflector, nice big capacity uh, charcoal basket. That you can put all this stuff in. I lit it up, tried to do the burn in. I got error messages. I'm like, ooh, what the hell happened? So I downloaded the um, the troubleshooting guide. 
wasn't really helpful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Went on Reddit, and it was slightly helpful. But then I realized, and it's because of the instructions, and you know, as good as the instructions for from Anderson Smoke Show, I got one of the wires crossed up with another one, and the fan wouldn't turn on. So I'm like, I right, fixed that. All good to go. So what you got to do first is preheat this thing for about two hours uh, 275 let that run and then you turn it all the way up to 400 degrees and then let it burn all the coal out so you probably want to put like you probably want to put like at least six pounds maybe maybe like a full 12 pounds of charcoal in there to get a really really good burn in it's going to take you a while so i didn't do all this the same day i did it like maybe the, i think it was the next day right Took my time, did it easy peasy after I figured out that that crossed wire thing. It was a little annoying, but it was no fault of my own because I usually like I usually like cross up something, and I'm hey I did low voltage uh, electrical stuff by you know back in the day maybe like for three months out of my life, so it's not my skill set, <laughs> and I'm not really that great at putting together stuff. I'm more I'm more like talented at like um, demolishing shit, you know. I'll break something real quick. I'll break it really quick. But putting them together, yeah, whatever. So IKEA stuff, don't do it, you know. Putting together a table or something, I'll get it done. But there might be like an extra piece missing, or you know, I got an extra screw somewhere. Like where was this supposed to go? But this didn't go that way. This is this is pretty smooth. All all that happened was that wire cross up. This thing has uh, wheels with casters on it. Love it. So it's not really heavy. Uh, if you do enough push-ups, you know, you stay in a moderate shape. You can pick this up, you know, you pick it up. How tall does it stand? I say this is taller than, I want to say this stands at a height of at about like five, six, something. Five feet, six inches, I want to say that. So I can definitely see over it. It's not super tall. But it is definitely tall enough to where you don't have to bend over all the time to manage whatever food you have in there. So it's really good. The only time you really have to bend over is to set the dial to the temperature and time and to uh, refill charcoal with delight for the first time. All right. So let's talk about the first cook I had. Because I only had, I only did two cooks. But it was enough to where I can give a pretty good... Uh, first impression of this thing and knowing how the future is going to go with this so i shared this product with my friend and because he was looking for a front loading uh virtual like a vertical smoker and i'm like i right, how about this he saw the technology on it he was like man that's that's like you know a pellet grill blah 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 I, 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 old school i don't know if i like that so i thought to myself I'm like, self, how traditional can this be even with the tech in it, right? Because it reg something regulates temperature. You know, it does that, right? All right. So I'm going in this thing, and I want to do chicken thighs. This is a pretty good, easy thing to start off with. You don't want to go, like, too all in, like, doing a whole bunch of food, like, expensive cuts of meat, all that. So I had some chicken thighs that... I had in the freezer for a while, and, you know, if it doesn't get eaten, if it gets messed up, who cares, right? You know, it's, it's a half pack of of skinned chicken thighs. So it has skin on. I took the skin off of, like, three of them, and the other four I had with the skin on. Season them up. Um, I can't remember the season that I had, but it's probably, like, um, salt, pepper, uh, paprika, garlic powder, a little bit of jalapeno you know granulated dry jalapeno and a little bit of like a barbecue rub right then i had a mop sauce always like my mop sauce right always got to have your mop sauce so i wanted to cook this at 275 the lighting process i didn't really follow the directions because the comments on this was it took too long to come up the temp so I tried to use my torch, which was a good idea in theory. It's a good idea in theory, but it took forever, forever for it to heat up to 275. Now, the way this thing works, the way it works is 
<laughs> and and I like it because you have to intervene sometimes. It's not like set it and forget it. It is definitely not that. Not like it advertises. Not set it and forget it. But it does give you uh, a level of uh, of comfort where you're not gonna go below the temperature that you want. So and it, and it does dictate the temperature by how much fuel that you put in this. So I'm, I'm giving you fair warning how you use this thing. Because with the gravity smokers, basically you fill it up and, and, and it does it, it, drop down, it drops down the fuel and then it heats it up with the blower and all that. So it works a little different because the heat source is not gravity fed. The heat source is just regulated by a fan from whatever's in this charcoal basket, right? So the more charcoal you have in this guy, the hotter it's going to be. And the fan is not going to cool the temperature down if you overshoot the temperature, if you know what I mean. So what it does kind of first when it when it tries to get set into the temperature is going to overshoot that 275 and it might get up to 300 and then it's going to go back down eventually. So you can do one or two things. Uh, and, and chicken is pretty flexible with the temperature. You know, it's not like you're cooking brisket and, you know, the, the breaking down of the tissues are going to be like, you know, it's, it's not detrimental, right? So you can do one or two things. You can put this, the chicken in once it hits 275 the first time, knowing that it's going to go up, then come back down. That's fine. Or you can wait until it settles into that 275. And that fan will keep it. If you don't have too much charcoal in it, mind you, because you, you got you kind of kind of learn that over time. How much charcoal do I put in there to sustain that that realm of of temperature? To over, to not overshoot it or undershoot it. So you can also put not enough charcoal in it, and it won't get as hot as you need it, right? Because you know you need fuel, right? So, um, I mean, if you wait until it settles in. It's basically gonna. It's gonna be a while. So my suggestion is, if you have this, be patient. Give yourself a good hour before you put your meat on. If you really want this to set into the temperature that you set it for, the chicken turned out great. So I used a little bit of cherry and a little bit of hickory. Put it in on top of the coals. And, and how it worked is better than I thought because I'm used to using these kettle grills. And this kind of worked a little bit like a, like a drum smoker in a way, but not really, not really. And it kind of worked like an offset, but not really, not really. It gave the quality of smoke that you would get from those other two type of devices, but it didn't give you an overbearing amount of smoke like if you put too much wood on the kettle, because the distance is so far away, and then you have a heat deflector between it and a water pan, mind you, that would regulate all this uh, distribution of smoke, that it has a different flavor breaking down the meat, how it, how it, you know, imparts that smoke into the chicken. Man, it was some good chicken. Oh, God. So good. It's so good. It was so good that I was like, I'm I'm really excited about using this. Now, the cool thing was as well, as these 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 racks, the grill racks, you can pull them out almost all the way because the way that the shelves work is they have little grooves on it that keep the the grate from just tipping over or falling all over the place. So you can pull you can pull that those those trays out all the way or the grates all the way almost all the way and you can you know tend the meat it's awesome check them for temperature and all that yeah it's great and i like the way how the the heating source pushes the smoke out of the back so how this thing works too is it has a internal thermometer once you put it together it's, it's towards the middle top of uh, the smoker and it's kind of where the smoke exits out the back. It's like a little ovulicular hole that pushes out the back. And I like how it the, the heat rises and it goes out of that. So the circulation is, is pretty spot on. Now, 
the difference of the heat from the the dial that's on the control pad and let's say if you put a standalone uh, thermometer in there to measure the ambient temperature as you know heat rises and things are calibrated different so i use this one that was built in the the ambient thermometer that was built in compared it with two other standalone thermometers that have a slight different calibration and you'll see a, maybe about a 10 to 15 degree difference on the cooking grate versus what is listed on the actual thermometer that's built into the machine with that said i i would i wouldn't get obsessed over the actual temperature difference as long as you're in that range you're pretty good you know you don't want to obsess over this thing you just don't do it just don't do it you'll you drive yourself crazy like i did the first time like i gotta do it spot on this doesn't regulate specifically like a a um a gravity fed smoker or a pellet grill for that matter because pellet grills are basically kind of like gravity fed as well you know but it doesn't operate the same way because the heat rises anyway and the fan is at the bottom the heat is going to get hotter as it goes up when it dissipates and tries to exit so we just got to stick with that range now if you want to use your own thermometer that's fine what i'm trying to tell you is there is still some intervention that you need and i like it i like it it's not that set and forget it you still have to keep in mind and be cognizant of how much fuel you have in this thing um uh, how long you need to cook it and uh, the ambient temperature outside all that stuff i like it i, li I like the intervention i don't want to i don't want to set it forget it and then lose all the skill sets that i've developed over the years uh trying to manage temperature myself without having you know that that regulator right there i, I don't want to lose that so it doesn't handicap you long term i like that now some might not some might some might say hey what's all this tech in here and i still got to I still gotta do shit. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. But there is a pro and con depending on how you like to use your smoker. Turned out well though. It really turned out well. Now, the, the thing that I don't like, and it's not the smoker itself. <laughs> the thing I don't like about this master build uh, smoker is the app. Master build, if you're hearing me, and I'm going to tag you in on this episode. My greatest bit of feedback is you need you need better product managers over the technology with this app. You need better app developers. It sucks. So this device is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled, right? So that means it connects to your smartphone, and you can use it with an app, which, like off the like right off the the rip, you're like, all right. This is easy peasy. You know, I'll just watch and measure the temperature from inside while I'm watching a game or something. Hands off, run to the store real quick. You know, if I need to change the temp, change the time, blah, blah, blah. Set the time, I do all that stuff from the phone. Great. Because it's Wi Fi enabled, right? All right. Nah. Nah, dog. This app sucks. <laughs> and they have two apps to do the same damn thing. I don't know. Like, why'd you make two apps that? that equally suck like why'd you waste waste money on that so i'm going in and it keeps dropping connection i don't know if everybody has this problem but from what i read on the internet a lot of people hate this app i think it got like a 2.5 or something rating on both google play and the apple app store yeah yeah it's bad and I installed the app on both platforms, equally as shitty. So it locks you into whatever temper you set, can't change it. It gives inaccurate readings. It disconnects all the time, tries to reconnect, and goddamn, it's going to drive you insane. So you're sitting there, and if you don't check it, you're sitting there, you think, oh, everything's great. <laughs> but the actual temperature ain't what you see on the screen. And you try to adjust the time or the temp or in the cook or whatever, it ain't going to let you do it. 
again, why does this app suck so badly? Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. Almost at the point where I might as well just uninstall the app. Because what happens, what I found that happened on my second cook is I had the temperature on the dial set at 250. But whenever the app connected to the smoker, which is few and far in between, but whatever it did, and it, this was from a previous cook where I set the 275, it's just kicking in that fan and goes up to 275, even though that's not what's programmed on the dang smoker. So I'm like, the F, dude? Really? Really? So my advice to you, you get the smoker, don't use the app. Don't even bother. Swear, don't even bother. It's not going to give you the accurate temperature. Not even, even if you don't set anything on the app itself, you set it on the on the smoker dial, that's fine. Go open the app. It's going to say two. Whatever you set it up previously, that one time, it's always going to show that. I have no idea why. I have no idea why. And it drives me mad. <laughs> that is the only thing I don't like about it. But whatever. You don't have to use the app. I suggest you don't use the app. I'm, I'm actually going to probably uninstall both of the apps on my Android phone and the one app that I downloaded on my iPad. I'm going, I'm just, I'm no, I'm not dealing with it anymore. I'm not dealing with that fucker anymore, man. I'm, I'm sorry. My, excuse my language. I'm not dealing with that shit no more, man. Cause it, it just, it just makes you question the quality of the product that you bought was nothing wrong with the smoker itself. The app will make you hate your smoker. Don't let that app do that because this is a bad ass device. And I suggest it to anyone that wants to get large capacity, more flexibility in their cooks, because this thing gives you a, a range of flexibility that I've never seen before. This is the only one of its kind, mind you, that has this fan regulator, just like a pellet grill or whatnot, but it still gives you that traditional way of still managing the fire. It's not set it and forget it like a pellet grill. You don't fill up the hopper and just let it go do its thing. You have to be mindful of how much fuel you have in this thing. Because again, if you fill it up with charcoal and it gets to a point where it's hot enough and more fuel means higher temps, you fill it up like that and you go in too hot and it's too hot outside, you know, the ambient temperature and all that. And if there's wind already kicking outside, you never know because there's ambient wind. You know, God makes wind, just not fans. And that thing kicks that temperature up. It's not going to drop back down. Now, the fan will cut off and try to let it come back down because there's no vents inside that, that, that charcoal chamber, right? There's no vents inside there. So it does dissipate, drop that temperature gradually if, if, if your coals let it do that now if you got wood in there and then it starts to ignite that wood and then whatever happens you know crazy stuff happens you know it's just all these factors then that could if you got a big ass wood chunk that can probably boost that temperature up then and once it gets going it's going it's gone but i did find consistency you know i i, I like to say like okay you got an offset smoker just treat it like kind of like an offset smoker uh you want to range you want to range, but maybe like 25 degrees. You want, to, you want to give yourself that range. Don't drive yourself crazy trying to have precise temperatures because it's always going to hover around. Now, when it gets set in, when it gets set in, it gets set in. But you just have to trust it, be patient, and be mindful of your fuel. So with that said, if you're trying to do a short cook, don't use a lot of charcoal. Because it's not anything to stop this thing from burning. So you're going to waste charcoal. But on the flip side, you don't want to use too little so that it doesn't get to your target temperature and hold it there for as long as you need. Now, you can always put more charcoal in it. It's very easy to get to it and add more charcoal. I like that. If you want to add more wood, open the thing up, put it in there. 
very well built. Now, a lot of people will say that um, the build quality on the, the the body of the smoker itself is thin. So, you know, it, it doesn't have great heat retention. So the fan has to do this work, right? It's not it's not insulated well. But the fan does a great job and makes up for that shortcoming. On the other side, you don't want to, and I don't know who does this. I saw a complaint about this online, but you're like, hey, if you touch your grill, you're going to burn yourself. Who is touching your grill while it's hot anyway? You say, you might not want to have this around kids. Uh, man, seriously? Seriously, man. Nah, nah. If your kids don't know, if you didn't teach them how not to get close to a damn fire, I'm sorry. Maybe you need to sit down and have a talk with them. Let me take another sip of uh, tequila. It's been a minute. But yeah, you can't let you can't let shit like that detour you from it. This is a great product. The other thing I did on this grill or smoker, I gotta stop calling it a grill. I did a whole chicken. Turned out perfectly. Perfect. Perfect. I added a little post oak in there with a little bit of cherry. Now, now I, I, I mentioned this before in the past, but if you don't know, don't add a lot of cherry wood if you're cooking chicken because it's going to make the meat pink, just like it does ribs. <laughs> That's poultry too, right? Don't add too much of that because even if it's done, and people bite into it, and they see all that pink. They're like, ooh, you're trying to kill me. I'm trying to tell you. So be very, very, very conservative about the amount of cherry wood. Or don't use cherry wood at all on chicken. That, that You know, that's the rule of thumb. You know, unless your family friends knew exactly how all that stuff works, and, it's, and the, they know that the chicken's done, don't use a lot of cherry wood at all or don't use it at all because it's going to make the meat pink somewhere and they're like oh that part's not done yeah man it's good it's good you won't get sick i cooked it to 165 internal on the breast and it's 175 you know in the dark meat oh yeah yeah but it looks pink no 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 let's not even do that let's not play this game so that chicken turned out great I use some grill mates um, garlic and herb seasoning, a little bit of Mrs. Dash and a little bit of salt. That's it. Put it on there, put it in the pan, let it get to 165. I don't I don't I don't trust the carry over that much. Now if it carries over to 170, I that chicken did not come out dry at all. Now the to keep your chicken from drying out like that especially the white meat, you can either brine it or inject it. I injected it with butter and a little bit of Tony Shasheries, and oh, we was in business. I've never had a chicken breast be that juicy ever in my life. I couldn't replicate that on the Weber kettle. For whatever reason, I couldn't. But this makes me have a crazy amount of confidence in my future cooks. I know I can get consistency in a really great product, a really great product, which will rival different type of, of smoke devices. You know what I mean? It gives that smoke. It's not oversmoked. It's not oversmoked. And, and the thing is really easy to oversmoke on two things, a Kamado grill and a kettle grill because the heat source is so close to it. And even if you have a diffuser plate, and all that, blah, 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 blah. It could actually oversmoke the meat. I didn't run into this yet. You don't want to put a whole bunch of wood in this thing. You want to use wood chumps, not wood chips. Burns longer. Make sure it, it does a really good job of, of dispersing that smoke. Gets the smoke into that bad boy. It, it's like a feeling of, what is the word? euphoria when you see that that thin white or blue-ish tint smoke come out that back it makes you feel official you know what i mean it makes you feel official it also comes with uh i think it's uh four ports for a uh, meat probes or you can use your your own standalone meat probes it gives you versatility i love this cooker i love it i love it i love it 
Now, am I going to cook on it a lot? Is this going to be my primary thing to cook ribs? Probably. I'm excited to cook ribs. I got a pork butt that's waiting on this thing as well. I'm really excited to see how that turns out. It gives you so much flexibility with the with the capacity and the way that you can cook with this thing. I can I can hang sausages in this thing on like let's go let me put the rack the top rack all the way to the top shelf setting and take all the other racks out and man just you just hang those sausages and you're in business and if that's what you need to hang sausages you can hang an ass load of sauce that don't sound right <laughs> when, it, when it started coming out I was like ass load of sausages that sounds suspect no, you can hang a lot of sausages in this thing. You can you can pile this thing up with different type of meats. Oh, I almost forgot. I, I made a lasagna in here, too, a veggie lasagna in here, too. Oh, my God, it was so good. You can use this kind of like an oven. It makes you feel like you're in one of those, um, those smoke restaurants, the, the barbecue restaurants, and they have this dedicated smoker like a, a, a vertical cabinet smoker, and they're just pulling stuff out, pulling stuff out, putting stuff in, pulling stuff out, going for a long period of time. This is perfect if you want to do a a, a number of briskets. I think you could get, and you could probably get like two briskets per shelf, so just add that up. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it is so versatile. It is so consistent. It, you still have, you still a learning curve. You still have to really get used to how the heat distribution works. But once you do, once you do, oh man, oh man, it's something serious. It's something serious that it, it just makes you feel good inside. And I can't wait to keep this thing going, man. I, I just can't wait to, to see what else. I can turn out with, uh, you know, as products with this, selling more dinners. I can't wait to get the the, the classic um, uh, seafood stuffed salmon pinwheels on this thing. I got some more orders for that I got to fill soon. So just putting that in there. I, I, I had those cooking on the Weber kettle for the whole year. But now, now I can, I mean, hey, hey, man. That is my top selling product right there. If you've never had my seafood stuffed salmon pinwheels, which is it's like a trademark of Maverick Barbecue, oh man, you gotta have it. And I, and I can't wait to test it out on this thing because I know, I just know, I know when I when I try to smoke that thing at about maybe like two twenty five ish. 235 something like that it's going to be mm -mm good <laughs> yeah i said mm -mm good don't, don't, don't judge me like that don't judge me like that don't, don't 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 do it don't do it you know i'm weird but i'm really excited about again what's going to happen in the years coming up i'm so thankful for all the fans again for for all the the the, the people that have been supporting this podcast and the other podcasts on the network, I, I I just can't say thank you enough to everything that you've guys done through the live streams, through the partnerships, the collaborations, um, through the the resharing, through uh, the the ratings of the of the podcast, and you know I'm consistently on the top one hundred. Uh, podcast listens in every every statistical category on good pods I, I can't say enough the the twitter community is really ramping up I, I, I love you guys the support you know the you know the feedback the follows the retweets again and all of that the reshares the, sub, the subscriptions loving this and the doors that it is opening for more collaborative efforts coming I, I man, I, I just can't I just can't say enough. Uh, this has been a big year for for this this medium that I that I use to get my thoughts and my and 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 you know my suggestions, my 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 uh, 
techniques, all that stuff. Where I, I just love to talk about grilling uh, as much as I love actual grilling. I just love it. It's it's a way that is very therapeutic. I think that if you don't grill, I think that is a very healthy way to go if you are trying to eat more healthy in the new year. Um, just try certain things. Don't be pigeonholed into all these traditions that you have with the grill. Uh, look at all these great YouTube channels that give you ideas about uh, recipes that you traditionally just make in the house, but you get um, you get it on the pit, and man, you, you just make magic. You don't always have to have wood smoke on it, but that charcoal alone, I'm, oh man, the the recipes that I have going forward um, in the new year are maybe a little bit. It's it's more diverse, so it's going to be a little bit of out the box thinking of how you grill things and pulling it back to tradition. Like those fast cook direct heat uh, spare ribs that you grew up when your dad was grilling. A lot of people didn't grill it the same way that we smoke ribs today. Like it's really popular. I'm just putting it over the open fire and just you know, hey, as long as you get that pull back and you get it tender enough, you're all good. The basic salt and pepper, all that, no wood. I just can't wait to to see what comes in the new year how you guys receive that content, the feedback, please leave me messages on anchor.fm. Um, you know, you can rate me on Spotify, Apple Podcast, we're everywhere you can listen to podcasts, even obscure places. I want to thank everybody out there again. I want to wish you a very happy new year. Stay safe out there. Um, just keep doing what you do, man. Just, I know the pandemic is still happening, but this is your opportunity to, to you know, to use a semi shelter in place thing to really hone your skills on the smoker, the grill, you know, impress your friends and family, save money. Don't don't keep ordering out to these barbecue places, man, unless you want to get a benchmark for a taste and you try to replicate that. And it's a great hustle to do on the side if you want to sell some dinners, get into that. It's very rewarding when you hear people like, oh man, I just gave a piece of this to my friend and ooh, they want more, can I order some more? That 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 shit, that shit makes me go wild, dude. I want people to, to, to understand that grilling can't and shouldn't be so intimidating. It, it shouldn't be, fire, that's what, that's what our, our ancestors did we didn't have electric stoves and shit like that back in back back in the day, you know what I mean? It was fire, live fire cooking. This is embedded in all of us. So I need y'all to get out there and do do what you do best, man. Be really adamant about perfecting what you cook and how you cook. Think outside of the box. Fuck the box. Throw the box away. You see that box? Kick the box. It's like an empty box. Kick, kick the box and give it to the cat. Cats like boxes. You should, unless it contains a new smoker. You know what I mean? So with that said, man, everybody stay blessed. And uh, we out of here.